to what is it? it was considered so sacred that it was known as Forbidden Hill. Forbidden because commoners were not allowed to visit. Of course, all that has changed and now you're most welcome to visit Fort Fanning to see the old British underground bunkers and if you're really brave-hearted, explore the ancient green stones that still remain on the shady coast. Now here's a building that just begs for attention. See the one adorned with colorful windows on your left? Home to the Ministry of Information, Communications and the Arts, its multi-huge facade not only reflects Singapore's multicultural budget, but also hints at the building's equally colorful past. Can you believe that this rainbow splash complex used to be the old Hill Street police station and was once considered a skyscraper? But that was before World War II. In fact, the old Hill Street police station served as Singapore's earliest security jail. And during World War II, it's even believed to have been a torture chamber. With such a vivid history, it's certainly no wonder the building was named a national monument in 1998. of Singapore's total shipping business. The sheltered riverbanks made excellent loading and unloading places. Back then, the whole river was chock-a-block with thousands of boats transporting a whole million of goods to be traded by the merchants who had set up shop and had lower buildings on the bank. Some of those goods included seafood, spices, and rubber. The precious was shouldered across gangplanks by immigrant laborers known as Koolies, whose blood, sweat, and tears formed the very backbone of our nation's rise to prosperity. Wonder why all the shop houses are concentrated on just one embankment of both key? Well, legend has it that the Chinese immigrants chose to set up home only on the south bank of the river. You'll notice how the riverbank curves just like the belly of a carp. In Chinese culture, this majestic fish is an auspicious symbol of good fortune and a great place to store wealth. These first immigrants believed that this part of the Singapore River was where prosperity and wealth could be found. 
That's also why many banks and businesses started up here and eventually developed this area into our current central business district. Where once folks lined the water's edge, today the banks of Boki aligned with shop houses turned into restaurants and pubs. The facades of the Boki shop houses have been retained and their unique architectural styles give the district a distinct flavor. Notice how the shop houses are of varying heights? Long ago, yeah. this signaled the owner's wealth. In other words, yeah, the higher the that. building, the wealthier the owner. Perhaps these traditional beliefs have extended till today. Just take a look at the tall skyscrapers of Singapore's financial district towering over the boat key shop houses. Oh. This is the perfect place for snapping pictures, so enjoy the 360-degree views and drink in boat key's unique blend of traditional Asian values set against a modern and progressive backdrop. See how the shop houses form a charming contrast of Singapore's developing years against the skyline of a new Singapore. This truly is a uniquely Singapore sight. By the way, are you feeling hungry? Hawkers and their push carts used to line the riverbanks, selling local dishes that were cheap and delicious. A bowl of Teochew porridge cost only 10 cents. Better yet, side dishes were free of charge. Every day, the people who worked and lived at the river would eat at these push carts, sitting on little stools along the river banks. Perhaps that was how alfresco dining got its start in Singapore. Directly ahead is Governor Bridge. Completed in 1869 and named after Colonel Sir William Arthur Kavanagh, Singapore's last governor, it's Singapore's only suspension bridge to have retained its intricate original form. It was manufactured in Scotland, then shipped to Singapore later to be assembled. Unfortunately, the bridge was built too low, and boats had to wait for low tide before they could pass. So look out, and don't forget to duck as we cruise under the bridge. <laughs> Just kidding. Coming up on the other side of Kavna Bridge, you'll see a group of little boys jumping into the river. Don't worry about jumping in to save them. They're actually incredibly lifelike bronze sculptures showing a scene from the river's past, where children would stand and wave cheaply from their houses. Very often, they would take off all their clothes and jump in for a cool afternoon swim. Standing tall and majestic is the exclusive Fullerton Hotel, which blends the elegance of old world charm with modern convenience. Built in 1928, lots of paper pushing went on behind the hotel's splendid columns before its glamorous makeover. Its facade is a masterpiece of neoclassical grandeur, which belies its much stuffier original occupants, the Chamber of Commerce offices and the General Post Office, from which mail was transported along the Singapore River to and from ships. Since the 1950s, this was also the site of many political campaign rallies, but even longer before that, it was occupied by Fort Fullerton, built to defend the town at the mouth of the Singapore River. This promontory to your right used to be home to the Mer Lion, Singapore's half lion, half fish icon. The Malayan stood guard here at the river mouth for 30 years before it was hauled by barge to its new home in the bay in 2002. As we make our way out into Marina Bay, you'll be able to see the Malayan for yourself and hear all about its story.
Up next is Malayan Park, home of the original Malayan statue. To understand our unique national emblem with the lion head and fish body resting on a crest of waves, here's a quick history lesson. Singapore was originally known as the ancient city of Tomasic, which means sea town in Javanese. But according to legend recorded in the Malay annals, Prince Sang Nila Utama renamed it Singapura, meaning Lion City in Sanskrit, after he spotted a lion on its shores. The lion's head represents the lion spotted by the legendary Sang Nila Utama, while its fishtail symbolizes Tomasic and Singapore's humble beginnings as a fishing village. Measuring 8.6 meters high and weighing 70 tons, the Malayan sits on reclaimed land looking out to sea. She attracts millions of visitors a year who make the trip to Malayan Park to photograph this world-famous icon at her new home right here in scenic Marina Bay. Take a peek behind the Malayan and you'll see a baby Malayan. Believe it or not, its scales are made from pieces of porcelain repurposed from spoons, gold, and plates. Next to the Malayan and her cub is a luxurious lifestyle dining and waterfront hotel hub known as the... hoping for a new future in a new land. It was also once known as Red Lamp Pier because legend has it that a red oil lamp used to hang on the pier as a comforting guide to weary seafarers. Mindful of its rich historical past as a bustling trading post and gathering place for food lovers and entertainers, Clifford Pier has been carefully preserved and now serves as the lobby of the Fullerton Bay Hotel. And beside it is Customs House, a charming conservation building from the late 1960s, which began at the Customs Harbour Branch Building, one of Singapore's earliest modern-style public buildings. As Singapore's shipping and trade boom, it became the home of the Singapore Customs Police, tasked with watching over one of the world's busiest harbours. Further up, you'll see the magnificent Marina Bay Financial Centre, which sits on prime waterfront real estate at the heart of Singapore's new downtown, and is an expansion of the Central Business District. Arguably the crown jewel of Marina Bay, this purpose-built financial center combines the best in form and function, blending office towers, luxury apartments, and retail space, making it one of the hottest places to live, play, and work, as befitting Singapore's position as a global financial, residential, and entertainment hub. It's also part of the three and a half kilometer Marina Bay waterfront promenade, which has become a popular scenic footpath, especially since this walkway boasts several unique design features. You can look forward to an uninterrupted experiential walk or jog around the bay. 
Do find time to explore the promenade, which links the landmarks of this beautiful Bay Area, including Marina Reservoir, Marina Barrage, and Gardens by the Bay. Also located along this fascinating waterfront walk is the Marina Bay City Gallery, which showcases the story of Singapore's urban transformation and the development of Marina Bay. Don't miss its touch-activated exhibits and innovative city model, offering a bird's-eye view of key landmarks in Marina Bay, which will help you navigate the Bay Area.
the gardens by the bay. Spanning 101 hectares, this award-winning super park is home to over a quarter of a million rare plants from all over the world. Enjoy the lush outdoor gardens, the huge climate-controlled dome conservatories, and the towering futuristic super trees, which you can even see from this distance. They're essentially vertical gardens, measuring up to 16 stories high and linked by suspended walkways with stunning views of the entire park. Living up to their name, the super trees also collect rainwater, generate solar power, and are venting ducts for the park's conservatories, which encapsulate the cloud forest and flower dome. Do you notice that the water here is very calm? This is due to the Marina Garage, which is a dam built across the 350 meter wide Marina Channel. It keeps out the seawater to create Singapore's first reservoir in the city, a vital source of fresh water and flood control. The Marina Reservoir is Singapore's 15th reservoir. It has the largest and most urbanized catchment area at 10,000 hectares, or one sixth the size of Singapore. Just imagine. which takes about 32 minutes to complete, rotating at a smooth speed of 24 centimeters per second. This engineering wonder provides taking panoramic views of Singapore and the islands beyond. In fact, from on board, you can see up to 45 kilometers away. That's three kilometers more than the entire length of our island city. You'll also notice to your right two curious spiky doors, unique only to the Esplanade theaters on the bay. Because of its resemblance to the King of Fruits, it's been affectionately nicknamed the Durian. But no worries here. Quite unlike its namesake, the Esplanade theaters on the bay attracts hordes of hungry culture vouchers, eager to taste of its many blockbuster productions. As the region's premier performing arts and entertainment center, it boasts superb facilities, showcases world-famous musicals and features popular homegrown events like a mosaic music festival. And to really talk about it, the estimate breezy rooftop gardens also get more unrivaled views of the city and bay. The green area to your right was once lined with lovely European-style houses that brought to mind the fashionable elegance of London's music. No wonder the Esplanade was a popular place for European settlers to see and to be seen. Back in the old colonial days, they would come from their houses to stroll along the Esplanade every afternoon. Here they would enjoy the sea breeze, exchange gossip, and perhaps even indulge in a little recent flirtation. As a nod to our colonial history, Queen Elizabeth Wharf was opened within the Esplanade Park in 1953 to honor the coronation of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. If you have the time, this park will take you on a pleasant meandering walk through the park to other interesting national monuments. The bridge straight ahead of us is Anderson Bridge, named after Sir John Anderson, yet another governor of the Strait Settlements. This elegant arch displays an excellent combination of intricate plaster and metalwork, whilst its curved structure provides high resistance to bending force, which comes in really handy since it supports the heavy weight of vehicles zipping back and forth daily. Government offices, the Empress Place 
building is now also a national monument and home to the Asian Civilizations Museum. The Asian Civilizations Museum is a treasure trove of history and culture that will introduce you to the world of Asian traditions. The museum features over 1,600 treasured artifacts in four themed geographical zones and includes a Singapore River Gallery dedicated to the history and the people of our beloved river. Be sure to check it out for an even more intimate picture of the things you've seen and learnt on this river cruise. You may have noticed a fine fellow cast in blinding white plaster, Englishman Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, the founder of modern Singapore. The statue marks the spot where Sir Raffles is thought to have landed in Singapore in 1819. Back then, Singapore was only a sleepy little fishing village, but Raffles saw enormous potential due to a location along the main shipping route between India and China. After signing an agreement with Singapore's then ruler, Sultan Hussein of Johor, Raffles set about establishing a trading post and free port on the island for England's East India Company. He developed a town plan, drawing up residential, administrative and commercial districts along the riverbanks of this budding island city. The large building we're passing on the right was Singapore's first courthouse, after which it became Parliament House up till 1999, when the new Parliament House... <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us on the Singapore River Cruise. 
We trust you've enjoyed your journey on the world's first environmentally friendly electric bus boats and hope you'll tell all your friends and family about this unique experience. We'd love to show them around too. So until next time, from all of us at Singapore River Cruise, we wish you a lovely and unforgettable stay in Singapore.